companies, all in airline industries. And they are sitting on big data. Um, I just first want them to introduce their companies and themselves. So just to give you the start, we, we have Turkish Airlines here, E-Dreams here, and uh, Skyscaler. They let me can start, ladies first. Um, so, I work in Skyscanner. I've been working at Skyscanner for four and a half years. Skyscanner is a travel marketplace. Um, we're mainly called the Mess Search, but we're now moving into the marketplace area. And um, we compare flights, um, car hire, and hotels, and um, currently serve 100 million unique users a month um, and have more than 100 million app downloads as well. Um, we operate um, in Turkey as well as uh, many other countries and serve in all the local domains with the local languages um, too. And uh, we work with partners like Odigio and um, Turkish Airlines and um, have over around 1,500 uh, partners globally as well. Yeah, my, it's the mic. So my uh, name is uh, Pablo Caspers. I'm uh, half German and half Spanish. Uh, living in Paradise, which is actually Barcelona, and uh, and I work for eDreams Adigio. Um, this is an OTA, an online travel agency, which is the largest OTA in Europe. Not so known here in Turkey because we are not a Turkish company. Therefore, I'm missing some important content from this gentleman here to my right. But uh, yeah, it's a large uh, online travel agency, and this is an interesting topic because it's all about getting you to our page and then converting you. I think we will talk about this later. And myself, I am Cengiz Deirmenci. I am working for Turkish Airlines. It's a very, very well-known brand in Turkey. Uh, I think everybody knows Turkish Airlines brand. So we are uh, connecting Istanbul to the world. So we are flying more than 120 countries. And Istanbul now is the most connected city in the world, actually. Turkish Airlines is my favorite airlines, as most of the Turkish people. Um, I, I want to ask you to start with your, as I told before, you are sitting on huge amounts of data. So how do you use employee data in order to, today also we talk about customer experience that matters the most nowadays. So how do you use data to improve customer experience? online customer experience. Um, so yes, we definitely sit on uh, huge amounts of data. Um, and we have first party data, what we call as our own proprietary data. Um, we collect data through any kind of search that's made on Skyscanner. So if you're searching uh, for a flight ticket from Istanbul to London, uh, we know that you've done that search. We know how many people um, you chose to travel with. Um, we know what dates you chose, and we know sort of the class that um, you're looking for, business, economy, etc., that you um, chose for the flight ticket as well. And um, all of these data points are gathered in um, different sort of data pools and data segments. And from these segments, we actually create different audiences. Um, what these audiences help us do is then to retarget these users with the best kind of deals that we have on site and off site as well to bring them back and let them know of the cheapest price tickets that we have available for the users. So ultimately, the goal here is to create a better user experience for all of, all of our users and all of the travelers that we have in order to take them back onto the journey of um, dreaming, planning, and booking. So um, we see our travelers within these sort of, um, sort of lights. So the dreaming part is when users come to our site and do their initial search. It could be um, to a destination, or it could be um, with our Search Everywhere tool, which allows you to search to um, all of the world at once as well. Um, and after that, we take you into the, into the planning section as well. So we know that you've searched a certain destination. We know you're interested in that. Um, then we retarget you with um, sort of content about that destination. So what to do if you're going to London, where to eat, um, what are the events when you're there. And then lastly, we take you into the booking area, um, which is what are the prices for, for our travelers and how can you book in a very seamless, um, seamless operation. Um, so I would, uh, 
I, I would suggest we, we try to live the customer experience here in this room. So I can make this in a two minute uh, exercise. If we can all stand up for a second, just everybody standing up. Let's just experience data science in life. So um, let's assume that you come to eDream's homepage and everybody is doing the same search, going for winter shopping to New York from Istanbul, okay? So who lives in Istanbul? Hands up. Okay, everybody not living in Istanbul, please sit down. The rest keep staying, standing up. Okay, that's a large crowd. So let's say that living in Istanbul, you would also initiate your trip from Istanbul. Is this right? The ones not initiating the trip from Istanbul, please sit down. So more or less everybody's standing up. So who would use a computer desktop versus the ones using a mobile phone? Who would use a mobile phone for searching a trip? Everybody else sit down. Just the ones using the mobile phone for travel booking stays. Okay. So who would travel alone to New York? Who would travel alone? Sorry for you, sit down please. Although married, who would travel with a lover? So this is the first time I see honest people here, but normally this would show you that you can trick data and that not always data are correct. So the ones traveling with lovers, you normally should sit down. I keep you standing up because you are so honest. So next time, who would travel with kids? Okay, sit down, please. So what we have here now is just a handful of people, which might be not even a 10% of everybody who stood up at the very beginning. And this little 10% shows how distinctive data can be and what user experience can be by doing exactly the same search. So everybody did the same search, Istanbul, New York in December, and just a few of you are still standing up. So just you would see the exact same result. All the others would not see your results because they are not this target group or not this segment. Thank you. I need to use this in my class. <laughs> Choose me, Okay, I got it. I'm genius, please. And for, for, for an airline, actually, uh, we use data for many purposes. So, so the, some parts so we use to improve the product, and in, in somehow we use to actually we use heavily the data to open the new route to serve the new customers. And finally, actually we, we have heavy data for the online, and with that we, we, we need to improve the, the channel itself as well. So when, when we uh, decide on the route, so or actual data guys, so they uh, look at the data, what the customers are searching for, how many people actually has a flight uh, for this destination, can we make them actually a direct flight, or a, how much passengers actually uh, we can attract with a connected market. Then this is how we decide on the schedules, the time zones actually that we can fly over there. And on the second part, for the online part, digital part, so you can attract, as I mean, Zainab uh, very well actually mentioned about how the data can be used for the marketing, but we also use it for improving the, the channel itself as well, because you can see the full picture, okay, where the customers are actually, I mean, dropping on the online. So what, what they are exper is experiencing. And also sometimes we make uh, real-time campaigns. I mean, uh, like, I mean, we, we see that the customers are searching for one destination and we have some uh, load factor issues, so we need some much more people over there, and then we make very, I mean, short-term campaigns to improve uh, the sales performance. So my next question will be about customer insights. So how do you drive customer insights by using data analytics, and do you have a success story to share with us? Sure. Um, so. I guess if we go back to the sort of the planning stage um, of our users, where we know that they are um, they are searching for a certain destination, let's say multiple times to find the the best price or the best time to go, um, 
we do work with our partners, such as Turkish Airlines, um, to surface um, the deals that we, we have um, through, through our partners, basically. So a success story that I, I'd like to share here is, is actually the one that we've done with Turkish Airlines as well, um, in terms of customer experience and using customer insights and then um, taking our users and travelers into sort of a seamless booking experience. Um, so with Turkish Airlines, we, we have uh, multiple sort of campaigns, advertising campaigns running, and uh, some of them are what we call performance campaigns, where we surface directly uh, the prices of, of the airline on the site. Um, we do that via different sort of um, native banners that we have, and um, these are all dynamic. So what that means is that if a user is searching for a particular destination, uh, the banner is shown um, itself and made up by itself with the dynamic price that comes up on it as well. And we've seen great results with this in terms of creating conversions and sending users um, over to the airline partners that we have. Um, on top of this, we also have um, brand slash performance campaigns as well, where we mix a bit of brand campaign with the price uh, point as well. So these are normally done for fly fest festivals and things like that. So where there could be events going on during the year where an airline um, might have special prices going on. And we know that users actually want to travel to a certain destination within those dates. Uh, we then make sure that we surface um, the best um, options to our users in that way as well. So in terms of using customer insights, I think it's really important as um, Pablo just you know, mentioned and showed us all, um, we have to be able to filter down to the right audience that we need to target in order to get them into the booking funnel. Otherwise, um, you know, there is, there is a break in the middle and they will not come back. So retention is also a very, very important point here. Yeah, I was going to ask that, so let me ask it now. Uh, so what is your retention rate? Or is it the most important thing that you customers? Are they uh, keep coming back? Yes, yes. Um, so retention is one of the most important metrics that we look at um, at Skyscanner. So globally speaking, we've got um, over 59% retention. So our users keep coming back to us. And um, I work in the advertising uh, department um, at Skyscanner. And um, on Skyscanner, you will never see huge pop-ups and things that will annoy you whilst you're trying to do your business on, on Skyscanner. So we really make sure that we only have products that are available for our travelers that are going to be useful for those travelers and not annoy them and you know, take them out of the um, experience that they want to have on the app or on mobile or on desktop as well. Um, and we make sure that we keep that retention rate up with things like you know, using newsletter and push notifications as well but we make sure to do that in a, in a nice and timely manner. Yes, you provide value to your customers, especially when they're booking for complex and mountain lake uh, yeah. trips. Uh, last year, I had two conferences in the United States, and there were 10 days in between. I decided to go to Colombia to visit the friend. Uh, I used Skyscaler, but I uh, bought the Turkish uh, I mean, from Istanbul to Houston, like from Turkish Airlines. In that way, you are kind of competing, I guess, with your online sales. I will come to that and uh, I would like to listen uh, your stories with insights. So, so customer insights. Um, it is similar as I showed before. So everybody stand up. No, it's a joke. So no one stands up again. So customer insights, it's about it's about relevance. So everybody from you knows that you search something online and then you buy it, like a trip for example. So you buy a trip to Hamburg, Germany, and then you did not yet fly. So you are due to fly in two months and like a week later the, you booked and you did not yet fly, you receive an offer to fly to Hamburg from the exact same page. So this should not happen because what then happens to you as a, as a user or as a customer is you, you think they should know me. And they should know me. I already booked. I left my name, my email, and everything. And this is so important in regards to customer insights. The problem is that there is currently going on a switch from cookie advertising, which has a very short lifetime and which is very often now deleted um, by most of the browsers, to have a unique identifier of the customer. Because if I know your email, for example, I can collect everything I know about you and build a profile, and then I can become relevant for you. 
I think if you see Amazon, for example, is doing pretty well. So you receive, you receive offers where you searched on. So, so you receive similar offers of something you bought, uh, which was bought by others. So I think that we, as a consumers, we don't receive, uh, sorry, professor, to use the word consumer, um, that we receive um, advertising which is relevant to us, much different to advertising which has nothing to do with us. So I think this is a little bit the secret about what to do with customer insight, to be relevant. Uh, I don't want to repeat the, the, the gentleman and the Zainab on them. So we also use, I mean, the data for the customer insight for advertising or making it more relevant. But I think it should start from, from the design phase, actually. How you design the total experience, how you can use the customer insight to address all the needs that can actually uh, be for customers. Uh, let's say we use actually the data, the customer insight, when approaching to design and the content. So what are the most actually meaningful flows that, that is actually uh, widely uh, appeared for, for the customer? What is the most important flow? What are the exceptions? So every traveler, they have different needs. Like, I mean, uh, they need to decide on when to go, where to go, actually, and with, uh, what to do in the destination. So each traveler have different solutions. If each, each traveler have, have different actual needs, if it's a business or if it's a leisure, or if they are going with actually a family or if they are going alone, or for business, I mean with colleagues or with girlfriend. So firstly, actually, we want to address what, what are the most important, actually, the flows, the experiences that we need to be very successful, okay? And then we gradually actually try to address, okay, then let's address the, the next, actually, most important experience. Uh, I think that sh should start from the design. Thank you very much. Um, I want to ask a question about the customer journeys uh, while we are purchasing ticket. Is it long? Is it short? Uh, do you have a segmentation or could you give us some hints? Because, you know, I mostly travel uh, for business and so they are and I go to conferences for three days or four days. Sometimes I had a little uh, second trip as I did last year. Um, so I wonder about the um, customer journey and uh, the important determinants of a successful completion of a purchase. Is it the price or is it something else? In your case, it seems like you know very mechanical. You do the search, you list. Um, Single options, of course, you check with the schedules and uh, things like that. But yeah, that, that's a really interesting point because what we actually see um, from the data that we have is it depends on, first of all, long and short haul, um, and then also it depends on leisure and business as well. So these are the different clusters that we have. So um, I can give an example from sort of travelers from the UK coming to Turkey, for example. So uh, our data shows that a traveler in the UK who wants to travel to Turkey, and we can pick an example of uh, the south of Turkey as well, um, they start searching uh, for their ticket three months in advance, and they will book that ticket about 65 days in advance. So they will start searching 90 days before, and 65 days is actually the booking time. So um, the reason for that is they know the price point and how volatile that is and how can, that could change. And also in terms of the, the, the cultural um, setting as well, um, the UK travelers are quite well known for being um, you know, uh, organized uh, with booking travel. Uh, not as organized as the Germans, I would say, but still organized. And we can, you know... Turks are last minute, and that has not changed. That has not changed. Yeah. <laughs> no, that hasn't changed. And this is actually um, a story that we come out with as Skyscanner Turkey in, in, in the Turkish media as well. Every single year, we're always last minute, and that has not changed. And there are other countries, um, you know, similar in the, in the Middle East that are last minute as well. So when you start moving from west to east, it actually the booking days become shorter and shorter and shorter. 
Um, so for us to then retarget users, that also becomes a really interesting point because for a UK traveler, we have about 60 to a 90 day window for us to go back to them and say, these are things you can do, these are the prices and things like that. For Turkish travelers, we don't have anything to say because it's such a short notice. We're like, okay, they're going, um, so we need to start you know, sending them stuff. So, um, and in terms of looking at best time to book, which is something that I also wanted to mention here, um, it's usually a question that I get, when is the best time to book flights and is it a certain day or is it a certain time? It's always known that you know, best time to book is, is looking at prices way ahead, but also looking at when the popularity of that place is. So if you're wanting to go to Australia during their summertime, which is winter for, for us, then you know that you're not gonna get a good price because it's a popular time, even if you're looking at it months and months ahead. So um, I think there are a lot of things to, to sort of bear in mind um, in terms of what a consumer has to do, what a traveler has to do. Very nice insights about Turkish customers last time we okay. Yeah, so you should know Spanish customers if you want to compare. So this is really last minute. We actually fly, and the next day we don't remember that we flew. So this is super last minute. So, so I think in regards to uh, to this consumer insights and the the uh, consumer experience in regards to uh, um, how to influence, etc. So you today you are a business traveler, but uh, but. Someday you will be a leisure traveler, for example, and depending on the money you have, your behavior is also different. So you will travel in business class for business purposes, but you might not travel with three kids uh, in business class if you go for a summer holiday. If you are 20 years old, you might not care about a flight which normally takes four hours if it then takes 12 hours, if you can save a few hundred euros, for example. So it depends massively on the person, and this person Although it's the same individual might have different ways of purchasing something, and there are search patterns, they are, they are movements on the home pages which we can analyze, and then we know if you're searching for a date which is three, time, uh, three days in advance to go for a one night trip, we know you are a corporate traveler. So you, the propensity for you to book is pretty high. But if you search today for something which will happen in six months, we know you might not necessarily convert. So then we have to do in real time, we have to take data, which is about, so we in eDream Strategio, we have about 12.5 million predictions in a minute every day, because depending on how you search and who you are, I might want to lower the price because you might search for something which is in three or six months ahead, but I want to convert you today. So then I might need to lower the price a little bit to convert you today instead of having you coming back to me three or four or six times. So it's, uh, it's all about data and we are all talking about data, but I think it's not about the data. Everybody from us has data. Even you at home, you have data. It's about the decision behind the data and what we do with this data. Yeah, of course, what you do with data is the most important thing. Uh, we all emphasize that today. And James? With travel. So I had one experience in, in Turkish Airlines. We had a meeting with a, uh, actually a British guy. So after a meeting, he asked me, OK, Genghis, why you are not selling? Actually, it was like 2018. He asked, OK, I want to buy actually a ticket for 2020. Why you are not selling? I said, what? You are going to buy a ticket for 2020? Yes, he said, OK, I'm going to uh, Australia. And I already booked for the event. I need to arrange for the flight as well. So that, that is, a, I mean, a different perspective, but I mean, it depends uh, with many factors. Like, I mean, how much you know about the destination? How much you know about the pattern of the destination? So let's say if you are going to book for Bodrum for a Turkish passenger, so the, if, I mean, if he or she is frequent with Bodrum flights, she knows very well that Bodrum is uh, heavy traffic in summer. Then he or she needs to actually make a book in advance, okay? But uh, sometimes if he or she is not very frequent with that destination, I mean, they may not have this information and they may go for the last minute. So once I was in the airport, you know, uh, we as an airline employees, we have a last minute tickets, uh -huh. okay? We have a standby tickets. I was in the airport because I saw that 
the Antalya flight was empty. Okay, it was like I mean a, a white aircraft, so there was 300 seats, so there was only 50 passengers at night. So at early morning, I went to the airport with the kids, and it was like I mean a 1 p.m. flight. So at 11 o'clock, the flight was full. So in the night, so there was 200 passengers decided actually to go to Antalya at that night. <laughs> and and th this is a Turkish style. And uh, it really depends on, I mean, the thing that you want to do in the destination, the purpose. So it's, if it's a business or leisure, or if it's a business plus leisure, or if it's a long stay or short stay, if it's a long haul or short haul, because for the long haul, the price of the, I mean, regular price is very high. So you need to actually find much more better way to approach with the price. So you want budget actually in the uh, long course. And this is how you decide actually. It depends how much you search for the data. But if you ask something for customers, how they can find the best price, I think the best price can be found by looking for the actually traffic. I mean, the demand is very low, let's say, most of the people, they shop actually at the last time in Turkey, uh, and they also book for the last day of the, let's say, school, because there is a school break. But if you can make, let's say, two, three days earlier, you can find better price. Or most of the people for a short weekend to the, I mean, Europe, they go from Friday and they come back on the uh, Sunday. But if you make it like a Wednesday to Friday, it can be cheaper because their demand is low. This is how we can achieve it. Thank you very much. We have still time, so we can take a few questions from the audience. Is there anything that you want to add? Oh, it will take two hours. <laughs> So I was wondering if you are applying game theory to the decision making already to keep the prices high. So like you said, Wednesday to Friday may be a better day, but most people will assume that you already know that and then you apply the higher prices to those days. Are you already doing those things? I mean generally, not Turkish Airlines, but are you already trying to do game theory in these things? Or is that so the AI would be able to do it? Yes, I, I know, but I think they can also answer because they know the prices as well. Yeah, but How, um, he did yeah. ask you. So. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I am not the pricing guy, but I know some actually how they apply the prices. Uh, I don't think, sorry? Uh, I am not the pricing guy actually, I'm not an engineer for the pricing, but uh, it is very dynamic. It's, it, it's not actually, uh, actually pushing customers to special days. It's not that way. There's a competition, you have a flight, and uh, it's a perishable product. So if the, I mean the aircraft, actually departs, you have no chance, okay? And you are actually fighting against, I mean, the time. And you have many alternatives for specific destinations. And uh, you, you have many flights to fill. And this is how you approach, actually, I mean, about the pricing. And you need to actually have the best, I mean, the revenue generation, uh, the total revenue of the flight, not for per customer. For instance, if the flight is not full or do things like that, they always go up. That's, that's... It may be, not, not very often, but it may be, because there are many, uh, let's say, I mean, checkpoints for the prices. So you start selling an airline ticket uh, 355 days before the flight. So you have too much time to decide on the prices. So normally, I mean, most of the time, 90% maybe, you increase the prices because the prices starts from the lowest classes, then you close the lowest classes when you see the demand. Yes, questions, please. Yes, please. Uh, how do you ensure price stability between 
how do you ensure price stability between Skyscanner and Turkish Airlines online site? Okay. I, can, I can maybe answer that. <clears throat> so Skyscanner has, as I said, about um, 1, 000, more than 1,500 partners globally. So we partner with the airlines, like the Turkish Airlines as well. We also partner with travel agencies um, who also sell the same sort of flight tickets as well. So in terms of that, we're a marketplace that, that we show all the price tickets in. Um, so in terms of a comparison, um, this is what we're there for. So you, you come to the site to see what would be the cheapest price for that same price, um, for that same flight ticket on that day at that time. So it could be via direct with the airline where they may have the lowest classes still open and they still have the lowest price available or it could be that it's, it's with an online travel agency because they have some inventory left over for the same flight as well. Um, so that, that is a unique selling point of uh, the marketplace anyway. Um, so it makes it just a one-stop shop for you to come and see exactly what you're looking for in one place. Uh, as Skyscanner, you present lots of options, uh, flight options to customers directly to us, but you have no responsibility to directly to customers because you leave uh, the customers between the airlines and customers. Two years ago, I was uh, planning to fly to New York instead of buying a direct flight from Turkish Airlines. I searched for the Google and I find some other cheap options from Skyscanner and I bought a ticket from Skyscanner. Unfortunately, the airline or the Skyscanner website does not provide me any information how to fly from the, uh, from Canada to New York and I was no experience, uh, indirect flight experience before. When I moved to airport, the airline staff told me that you have to have a Canada visa, but unfortunately I am not. Then I have to buy another ticket from the last minute ticket from the Turkish Airlines because my wife is looking uh, at my face and you say, she said, you are, uh, uh, you want to buy a cheap ticket, that's why we are waiting in July. <laughs> and I was not able to reach the United <laughs> Airlines because there is no available office in the Turkish, uh, Turkey for the last five years. And I cannot, I'm not able to reach also any Skyscanner stuff. How you share the responsibility with the airlines sure. and because you are the ones who provide or present that flight option mm -hmm. to me. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's an absolutely great question. So there are two parts to this. One is the complexity of um, the visa situation here, right? So every country has a different visa situation available to them. And um, it's, an, it's, an, it's a challenge for us as well to be able to surface all this information in one place at one time. Uh, but this is something that we're also working on for us to be able to have that information that is up to date as well at the same time so that we are giving the users the best experience possible. Um, in terms of the sort of the flights and uh, what happened to yourself and the, the connection between us and the airline or the travel agency, a um, couple of years ago what we put into place is um, something called um, the um, net promoter score as well. So what that does is um, we have different sort of um, starring systems for airlines and travel agencies that we work with in order to make sure that we are giving the best customer service and experience to all of our travelers. So what happens is if you were to have a, um, a problem with your ticket um, in some shape or form, uh, we help our travelers to get in touch with the airlines and the OTAs as well and we make sure that there is a line of communication between them. And uh, if the situation isn't resolved, if the travelers aren't happy, they're able to give us that feedback. And what we do is that we surface that within the starring system on our site so that our users can see what happens in terms of customer satisfaction with those airlines and those um, travel agencies as well. But I think going back to your first um, sort of uh, question there, um, I think it's a challenge just globally to find that um, information that is up to date and reliable because uh, visas are obviously very, very important for people to travel. Um, but yeah, we're definitely looking into that um, as Skyscanner as well. Thank you very much. This is the end of the panel. Thank you.